All right, and we are live. Uh, Alex Parker from 1330 WFIN, and I'm with Congressman Bob Latta. Um, so first thing I'd like to, to talk to you about, so you're on a subcommittee uh, that discusses uh, communication and technology. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, there's six different subcommittees on the energy and commerce, and you're correct. Uh, communications, technologies, is what we call telecom. So when you're thinking about anything related to uh, radio, when you're talking about broadband, when you're talking about uh, television, anything like that is covered by by the uh, telecom subcommittee. Gotcha. Um, it's interesting that you, that you mentioned broadband. Uh, that was another thing I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, you've been kind of a big proponent for getting broadband access in rural areas. Uh, could you tell me about how that's going? Well, it's important because I also serve as the uh, subcommittee chairman of digital commerce and consumer protection. And when we're thinking about, especially like precision agriculture, and uh, a couple of years ago, my mom's family all came from between Pandora and Columbus Grove. And uh, the uh, Lattice came from the Macomb area. But uh, my mom's family, they farmed over there, and, you know, my grandfather had farmed with a team of horses. Well, several years ago, it was down, two years ago, in fact, it was down in Paulding County. And what they were doing, they were going to go out in the field and put the, the fertilizer in furrow so it wouldn't run off. And, but in the spring, they were going to be able to come back out and plant the corn almost within one inch of where they had been out the year before or the fall before. And to make sure that we have the spectrum out there, we have to really make sure that it's it's being taken care of because we have a lot of areas that have no no spectrum out there they you know so for farmers it's a it's a disadvantage uh for small businesses for you know rural hospitals so we want to make sure that we get that broadband out there i've served uh and serve on a uh, a kind of an ad hoc uh committee that what we have is on the rural uh, rural uh, broadband uh, caucus out there and so what it is is again it's from around the country this is not a republican issue democrat or independent it's everywhere out in the rural areas we have to make sure that it's out there so that people have it and uh, especially from precision agriculture to like i said for businesses it's important for them gotcha. um another issue that uh i've been following viewers is uh health saving accounts um, so can you kind of talk me through uh, what, what the issue is around health savings accounts? Well, the health savings accounts are really important because we see more and more people using them. And because it's important because, you know, it's, you, you can take advantage of and making sure that you're doing what you want with your, with your, with your health care. And uh, so when you're looking at uh, an HSA, it's, it's like, okay, what, what can I do? Well, we want to make sure that people can put more money in, into the accounts. Uh, for individuals out there that are getting near retirement and some all of a sudden one spouse isn't eligible anymore we want to, uh, my legislation I want to make sure it got through is that people can keep uh, putting money into that HSA it's also making sure that you know we've seen uh, different types of drugs that uh, used to be prescription that have now gone to uh, uh, over the counter that you can use your HSA to be able to buy those drugs over the counter at the same time, because, you know, all of a sudden it'd be like, well, wait a minute, why, why do I have this if all of a sudden I can't utilize it for certain things? So we want to make sure that people have, uh, uh, can take advantage of that and keep moving forward with the HSAs because, as I said, they're growing in popularity. More and more people are using them. Gotcha. Um, how, how can uh, the federal government help make these more accessible and, and sort of uh, make it easier to use them? Well, again, it's, it's through legislation. It's making sure that uh, as we as we uh, get that legislation, put it forward, and that's what we, we what we've done. We wanted to make sure that people have that opportunity. So we pass that legislation out of the house. It's important that it gets uh, uh, signed into law, because again, it's making it's having the ability for people to to take control of their own health care by having the HSAs. And so it's the Congress that's got to move forward and get this thing done for people. Um, now, uh, kind of switching gears here, um, you uh, recently sponsored a bill uh, that was brought forward by the Energy and Commerce Committee, um, and that was to help combat the opioid epidemic. Um, can you kind of explain that to me? Well, we all know we, we've had a horrible opioid crisis, not only in, in Ohio, but across the country. A statistic, horrible statistic just came out that 72,000 people died of overdoses last year. In Ohio, in 2015, it was 3,050 people died. It went up to 4,050 people in 2016. 
If you look at the year ending June 30th of 2017, go back a year, it was 5,232. So, you know, we're seeing, you know, uh, this horrible epidemic across our our country. And uh, one of the things is I've done over 900 meetings in my district in the last uh, six years. uh, As I'm out, I'm talking to first responders, I'm talking to the hospitals, I'm talking to the people that, that are working to try to get this under control and stop. And one of the issues they had was, well, we can't find the help. Where, where do we get it? If you're a small department or an agency, you don't have grant writers out there that are out there being able to find it. So we created a dashboard in, in the, uh, the law that uh, I sponsored that you can go online, find where the help is, and at the same time find out where the money is. Because what we were able to do, we, took 50, we were able to pass 57 bills out of committee dealing with opioids. Because again, as I said, it's we're in a we're in a horrible crisis, and we've packaged them all under then under what we call HR six, and that's moved over to the Senate now. But when you look at again the situation that we have in the country, that you've got so many people being addicted because you know like fentanyl, for instance, it's being laced into marijuana, heroin, cocaine, and just a just a small small amount of fentanyl will kill you. In fact, when I uh, had a, a forum here in Finley at the university, and I also did one at Defiance College, we had a gentleman from uh, the Health and Human Services there, and he held up an aspirin. And he said, uh, he said uh, how many people are in this room? And it was around 170. He said, if this was fentanyl, it could have an effect on everybody in this room, the one pill. He said, how many people live in Defiance? And it's about 17,000. He said, if it's car fentanyl, it could affect everybody in the city of uh, Defiance, this one pill. So these drugs are, are dangerous. Uh, and again, it, the, the, we, we, we pass legislation to try to get, you know, to help people get away from the use of opioids, to maybe the non-opioids, to make sure that they have an opportunity to ask for medical devices that might work better for them or pain management, but uh, this is a crisis that we have in this country we all have to fight. And uh, so uh, make sure I understood this right, that the bill allows people to go online and, and find the help that they need? Right. Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a dashboard that you can go on, and because what, as, we, as it's developed by the, the department, it'll have the ability that you go online, you'll find, uh, the, you'll find that information, that you know, what you need, where that help is, and at the same time, okay, what what dollars are out there that they they could apply for? Because again, like I said, we have so many small you know departments, agencies in our area that just don't have the resources available. If you're from a larger city, that say, well, we got these people that can do this all the time. We want to make sure that the folks in our smaller areas, not only in our area but across the country, because it's interesting. After I've introduced the legislation more members started talking about problems they were having. I remember being in a meeting one day with the, the full committee chairman of Energy and Commerce. He said, well, what you want to do? You want to get on Lattice Bill because it, it does exactly what you're saying you need help on. And so we, we were able to get the, our, our legislation out and get over to the Senate. Gotcha. Now, is that already in effect? And if so... It's, it's right now what we're waiting for. The, we have to wait for the Senate now to act. And uh, the Senate's got a lot, a lot of work to do. We, we've sent them about 805 bills. They've got 605 to go. But uh, I think when we're, especially when you're looking on the opioid side, it's absolutely imperative that they get, they get to work on these and get to work on the House bills that we've sent them. You know, it's everything from I've heard from, you know, uh, people saying they went and they got maybe 20 to 30 pills of pain medication. Well, what we're saying in some is that, you know, instead of giving them that many, just have a blister pack with maybe three pills in it. So because we know that over 40 percent of the people that are getting addicted to opioids aren't from prescription. They're stealing them out of someone's medicine cabinet, you know, a relative of friends when they're, you know, they run in there and they look open. Oh, I'm going to take X, Y and Z out of here. So we want to, you know, limit that. And when the FDA commissioner was before us in committee, I asked him a question, which I pretty much knew what the answer was going to be. Why is it that we have an opioid crisis in the United States, but we don't hear about it across the globe? He says, very simple, we're over-prescribing. Uh, those were all the questions I had. Um, looks like uh, we've got some smiley faces, uh, so no comments uh, otherwise. But uh, thank you for, for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. I actually got to go here.